Okay, so the last video on here was a tier list on design, and that was fun, but continuing with the theme of videos that loosely tie into content on the main Mockrock channel, we're gonna do a traditional power-based tier list, this time obviously for command grabs. The end goal is to have a decent amount of tie-in content both for new Mockrock videos as well as older, more popular ones in my back catalog. So like, the problems with counters in Super Smash Bros is still one of the ones that pulls in the most views per month on my channel. You can imagine what its tie-in video might be. Something like my best of every move, worst of every move lists, which are gonna get a revamp after DLC C wraps up. The tie-in video for that might be something more along the lines of talking about moves that didn't make the cut and why. But today, command grabs. So I've included everything that could reasonably be considered a command grab, including some that will go outside people's viewpoints. So a very traditional command grab follows pretty strict criteria. It's an attack that acts like a grab in every sense, including the fact that it goes through shields. Something like Byla's Sword of the Creator or Isabelle's Fishing Rod, they're not really command grabs in the strictest sense. They might be called hit grabs or something along those lines, but I've included them just because if I got rid of them, I'd be getting rid of a lot of interesting moves to talk about. Also, this caused a bit of confusion last time, so to clarify, everything the move does is being considered for this list. So if it's supposed to be part of a character's recovery, how good a job it does of that is factored in. If it's got a projectile attached to it, how good that projectile is, is factored in. The only other thing to talk about would be the ranking criteria. So there are a couple of ways that you can rank this on a tier list. You can rank these command grabs against all other moves in the game, and command grabs tend to be very good, so they'd usually all be sort of grouped into the higher tiers, or you can rank them strictly against themselves. That's the approach I've taken to avoid having everything squeezed higher up, but it does mean that there has to be at least one S tier and one F tier, or the tiers are meaningless. That's not to say the moves that end up in F would necessarily be bad in the grand scheme of Ultimate's entire move list, but it's just the nature of this kind of list. Alright, let's do it. Let's start off with an easy S tier here, Diddy's Monkey Flip. Just one of the better moves in the game overall, it allows you to choose between a really solid command grab and an attack, it allows you fantastic recovery mix-ups, incredible mobility, including some cool tech out of the move. Just, I really can't think of anything to complain about with Monkey Flip. Obviously, it's not a move that you can just spam all the time without getting called out for it occasionally but it just does essentially everything you could reasonably ask of a special move, and on top of that, it happens to be a good command grab. So I think that one's going to be a pretty non-controversial S tier. Mewtwo, I'm going to put this one in A. So purely from the sense of using it like a grab, it's a little underwhelming. The flip around effect doesn't have any true follow-ups. It doesn't do that much damage. The range is pretty good, but it doesn't have a whole lot else going for it. However, when we start looking into some of its other uses, things get really interesting. Obviously, it's an anti-projectile move, and a pretty good one at that, but what I'm really talking about is when we get to its aerial use. It's such a good way to pressure opponents on platforms, pressure opponents while you yourself are on the ledge, the fact that it kill confirms into his forward air at hypersense against basically the entire roster. Overall, it's just a really, really solid move, and the air stall gives you some nice recovery mix-ups with it as well. Obviously, nothing like Diddy's Monkey Flip, but you'll take any little bit of help you can get, especially when you're Mewtwo. Let's do Ganondorf here. Flame Choke, I think I'm going to give a B to, and that's because as a actual command grab, it's fantastic. The fact that the grounded version essentially always leads to a guaranteed follow-up on your opponent if you can predict their option is just so strong, and it also does a lot of damage itself, which means I know you can technically take your opponent all the way from zero to death, you're not actually realistically going to do that most of the time, but if you get even just one or two reads, the damage output can be insane on this thing. It's got the Ganon side, which was really heavily nerfed in Ultimate because your opponent can mash out of it and it kills Ganondorf first now, but it's still an option that you can occasionally use, not a huge factor in its placement, but is worth talking about. Even the aerial version going back onto the stage is pretty reasonable, it sends your opponent into a grounded state, and it's also really good for pressuring platforms, especially with that uh, burst movement that it has. The burst movement option is also kind of the problem, though, because it's clearly designed to be part of Ganondorf's recovery and is also one of very, very few moves like this in the game that sends you into freefall. I have no idea why he's the one who got stuck dealing with this. He's a heavyweight, survivability is supposed to be his thing, so this really, really hurts him. So as an offensive command grab, it's easily an A tier. Possibly you could even make a case for S. I'd argue that it's just a little bit too leggy for that, but it's definitely up there. The damage output, the ability to take early stocks, the ability to cheese your opponent. All good stuff, 
As a recovery tool, it's absolutely terrible. C, probably F tier, so we'll split the difference and say B. Dark Dive, this one's gonna go in C. So obviously, as a recovery tool, again, not great. Its range is better than Flame Choke, but the fact that you can body block him and then just tech off the stage and get a reliable punish, even though it was patched to specifically prevent that, is really annoying. Again, he's a heavyweight. Survivability is supposed to be one of the things he's really good at, and it also just doesn't go that far. Now, as a command grab, it's actually pretty reasonable. Extremely powerful, and the fact that it shoots you up means it covers multiple scenarios. So, for example, in a ledge pressure situation, if your opponent either stays in shield or jumps, you can kill them off that, which is great. Obviously, though, if you miss, it puts you into a really horrendous situation because it has basically no air control after you use it and sends you into free fall. So you really are just a sitting duck, and if an opponent lands one free hit on Ganondorf, you can take so much damage from that. It's also just, unfortunately, really slow to start up, so trying to use it as an out-of-shield option, for example, typically doesn't work very well. This one, on the other hand... This is a little bit of a you versus the guy she told you not to worry about situation because Captain Falcon's is uh, Captain Falcon's Raptor boost is so much better than Dark Dive. It's basically a strict upgrade to it in basically every way, apart from arguably the fist that Ganondorf sticks up. But that's such a poor trade off; it's not even worth talking about. I'm gonna put this one in A tier because basically everything I said about Dark Dive applies to this, except they've all been upgraded. The tech check setup technically still exists on Falcon. Again, it really shouldn't. I wish they just properly patched that, but the window is much smaller on Captain Falcon, and he has so much more drift after he uses this that even if it whiffs, it's still surprisingly difficult to punish, particularly on platform stages. Much more versatile as a recovery tool because of that drift. Fatality infamously shows that off really well in a lot of his gameplay. Much faster out of shield, which means even though you're not going to be getting a whole lot of true shield punishes in terms of frame data, at least on aerials on your shield, you're still going to catch a lot more people with it, and it also works against a hell of a lot more grounded moves than Ganondorf's does, and it's also really not trading off much for all these benefits. It's still an insanely strong killing move, and Captain Falcon is way better at chasing his opponent off stage to make the most of it. Its air drift is actually so good that you can chase your opponent all the way off stage, try and catch them with an up B, and even if you miss, you can still make it back to stage and probably avoid being punished, which Ganondorf can't even dream of attempting. Overall, kind of surprising just how good Raptor Boost has ended up being in this game. Have I seriously been calling it Raptor Boost this entire time? Falcon Dive. Falcon Dive is an A tier. Let's continue with that kind of Ganondorf 2.0 theme. Uh, Incineroar's Alolan Whip, that's going right there in S tier. Gets ridiculously strong when you stack it with Revenge, and the fact that it has multiple options is a bonus that wasn't even needed, but is still just insanely useful. Obviously, you just pick the success state if you want pure damage or kill power. You can use the juggle state to get them into the air pretty easily, and also the failure state, surprise has use as well since it pushes them off stage quite easily. Yeah, you do need to time the button press, but you just kind of assume that Incineroar mains are going to know how to do that pretty much every time. It's a 4 frame window, which is big enough to be reliable, so it's really not too much of a factor. And unlike Ganondorf 1.0, it does not send you into free fall, which is how these moves should work on heavyweights. You can really describe it like a lot of Incineroar's kit, right? It's a super good move, but it's attached to Incineroar. Do another Pokemon, Lucario that's gonna be a B tier. Basically split right down the middle. At low percents, it's terrible. At high percents, it's really good. Like, at low percents, it has basically no damage output, no knockback, the projectile doesn't do all that much. At really high percents, though, it's an extremely strong command grab and has a lot of utility from the projectile afterwards. At all times, though, that projectile afterwards is a little bit of a mixed bag. It can help you, for example, catch certain spot dodge timings, even if your opponent manages to spot dodge the initial command grab. At the same time, though, it also makes you way Way more vulnerable if the move completely whips. Kirby probably gonna be a B tier, and I don't love saying that, but the thing is, the command grab itself is not that great. It's fast, but it's also one of the laggier ones on the roster. And the payoff for the command grab itself, again, pretty lackluster. You just shoot your opponent out in a star, and it really doesn't send them very far, it doesn't do all that much damage, just kind of underwhelming in general. Kirby side, I guess, is still kind of a thing, but ever since the series changed how ledges work so that you can't stall on them forever, it's way less of a factor, and it was still kind of a bit of a gimmick to begin with. So what this really comes down to is the copy abilities, and they're just a super mixed bag in general. Obviously, once you start talking about the best copy abilities, yeah, they're insane, and because Kirby has multiple jumps, he can actually abuse them often better than the Source character can. But at the same time, there are a decent amount that are actually pretty mediocre, maybe even worse than a command grab. In competitive play, you actually regularly see players just 
top to spit their opponents out rather than take their abilities, and even a lot of the abilities that might technically be considered an upgrade to the command grab often just aren't worth the risk of going for. I'd like to put it higher, but realistically, I think it belongs in B tier. King Dedede, I think that's also going to be a B tier, so obviously no copy abilities can be a big blow in a lot of matchups, but the trade-off is that he can now inhale and spit back projectiles, which is a really big deal for a character as slow as him. It's a bit slower than Kirby's overall as well, so I think on many other characters' kits, you could even make a case for this being in C tier, but DDD gets so much use out of it, especially since it also interacts with his Gordo, so I think this makes sense. It does depend a bit on the criteria you're using, but for this list, I'm not really ranking these moves in a vacuum. How they interact with their character does matter. He gets a lot of interaction out of it. I guess we'll kind of continue with the last of the vacuum them up moves, and for King K. Rule, I think I'm gonna give the first F tier to it. That doesn't mean it's a bad move in the grand scheme of all attacks and ultimate. Once again, command grabs tend to be really good, and projectiles also tend to be very good. But I don't think this is a great example of either of them. The command grab itself, you're never really going to surprise your opponent with this. Like, I, I know you can drop through platforms with the actual vacuum. I know you can move it around a little bit and do this kind of stuff. But the bottom line, you need to fully fire the projectile first, then keep holding the button. So it's just so slow. This means that it really realistically only has use at the ledge most of the time. And you can just literally wait that out. You do see people get caught by this occasionally, of course, but kind of the higher you spiral up into tiers of players, the less this tends to be a thing. Refiring the cannonball after it comes out can lead to some tricky stuff, but again, it's just so slow that you really don't tend to see it all that much among the best K rules playing other very good players. The fact the command grab has multiple angles you can send your opponent at and it kills is really good, don't get me wrong, but it's just the act of actually landing that command grab that can be a bit of a problem. As for the projectile itself, Slow moving projectiles that you can walk behind or run behind should be really good. There aren't that many of them in the Smash series, but like in traditional fighters, you see them all the time, and they're an extremely powerful neutral tool. The problem with King K. Rule is that the act of firing the cannonball has quite a long animation, and he himself is just not all that fast a character, so he might get some traction in neutral from it, but it's not nearly as much as this would be on a lot of other characters. Again, I need to emphasize that in terms of all moves on all Ultimates characters, I don't think the blunt bus is necessarily a bad one, but command grabs tend to be really premium moves, and I don't think this one's bringing quite the same punch. Unlike Bowser, S tier. It's frame 6 and it kills. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. It gives Bowser what might be the scariest platform pressure in the entire game. It kills at very reasonable percentages. If it lands on a platform, it can kill even earlier. Very little risk to throwing this out, works great in the air, Bowser actually has surprisingly good mobility to make the most of it, and if you don't shield, he can hit you with just absolutely devastating aerials as well. So Bowser jumping at you is so terrifying because he has a move for every situation. He's also got the Bowser side, which isn't the world's biggest consideration, especially since opponents with really good recoveries can survive against it sometimes, but... I've got to say, in a practical sense, it actually does seem to get more use than I initially thought it would. Yeah, the individual tiers in this aren't ranked, but for what it's worth, I think this is a strong candidate for the single best command grab in the game. It's just completely no frills, no fluff, it doesn't do anything besides grab your opponent really fast and kill them really early, and it's so good at that. Even if you're not killing them, it still does such high damage and gives you great positioning. It's so good. Yeah, Bowser's side B is busted. We'll go with kind of a similar move, Kazuya's Heaven's Door. Um, This one I think I'm going to put in B tier. So in theory, it kind of does a similar thing that Bowser is doing. In practice, it's way slower. Frame 14 versus frame 6 is absolutely huge in terms of being able to react to it if you think a command grab is coming. It's still too fast to realistically react to the startup of the grab in most scenarios, but in terms of your opponent repositioning themselves towards you to try and land it, way more lenient in terms of your timing to escape. It's got armor on it, which is obviously great, but I don't think trading armor for more than doubling the startup time is a particularly good deal, and Kazuya also just doesn't have anywhere near the same mobility Bowser does to actually make use of this in the air. In terms of just reliability and the amount of different scenarios where you can realistically reach them in time, not even close. And then his Rage Drive, um, this may seem a bit weird, but I think I'm actually also going to put this one in B tier. So obviously in terms of raw numbers, it's better, it starts up faster with the input version, it does way more damage, kills earlier, all that good stuff. In terms of being a comeback mechanic though, it's just 
not that impactful. You can only use it once, it's a very specific little window that you have it for. Your opponent can run away and try and poke it out of you reasonably easily a lot of the time. And even then, like don't get me wrong, it's got really high damage output and pretty solid kill power, but even if you manage to land it, which can be a struggle, it's not like it's a guaranteed victory after that point. It very often doesn't kill them, and it's doing the same kind of damage that he can realistically get if he manages to land a hit on you anyways. Again, it might be a little bit weird to put the normal version and the super version beside each other, but the super version is trying to do different things, it has a different role to play. Speaking of super moves, Terry's Buster Wolf, um... This one, I think I'm gonna give an A tier to. This is a hit grab, it doesn't go through shield, that is a major knock against it, but it's really easy to combo into because Terry has special canceling. And even though it's a little bit slow to start up, because no matter how good you get at doing the relatively complex input, it still will add some time, its burst range is still quite solid. You're still probably realistically gonna be using this more in combos than you are as a raw, like, tool in neutral, but it can be used that way, and its combo potential is so reliable, and it kills so early, and even a lot of combos that technically aren't true will still catch tons of people off guard. This one I think is really doing what super moves feel like they were supposed to do. If it went through shields it would be easy S tier. I think you could still make a little bit of a case for it here, especially since you can potentially have it for so long. Being available anytime over 100% is relatively comfortable for Terry since he's so heavy, but just because it's competing against all these moves that go right through shields, which is such a huge part of the power of command grabs, A seems fair to me. Me Brawler. Okay, so let's get the counter out of the way first. Um, I think this one's gotta go in F. I think it's realistically a little unfair to have it here. It is a counter competing against command grabs, and command grabs tend to be really good, and counters tend to be kind of mixed. But again, if I'm including all of them, I'm including all of them. Even as a counter though, it's kind of iffy in some areas. It's nice that it's got less leg on it than a lot of the other counters, and if it connects, it really is pretty strong, but it's harder for it to connect than a lot of other counters because the detection window isn't very big, and its range isn't very big either, so it tends to whiff a lot more than a lot of other moves. That's honestly a pretty big deal. Counters are not the safest moves to be using in the first place, you really don't want to be spamming them too much with most characters, and even though me brawlers is less risky to go for than a lot of them, the potential to go for a counter and have it whiff, that really sucks. And that's on top of the smaller detection window, meaning that you can know what your opponent's about to do, but just be a little off on the timing and suddenly your correct read is now a hard punish. I think I'd much rather trade some of these strengths for more reliability, especially since counters don't tend to be moves you're using a lot unless you already have a firm hold on what your opponent is going to be doing. But realistically, the main reason it's an F tier is because, again, it's a counter going up against command grabs. Suplex on the the other hand, that's a different story. This one's going in A tier. This move is great. Really high damage output, great burst range. If you use it out of a short hop, it can be surprisingly safe, and it even has a kamikaze option. The fact that it never ever kills outside of this kamikaze option or even leads to the chance of getting a direct follow up into a kill is kind of what keeps it out of S tier, but overall, in terms of sheer utility and safety and getting a good chunk of damage to lead into one of your more conventional kills, it's really solid. Joker's grappling hook, um. I'm kind of debating between C and F tier for this. The only thing that's potentially moving it up into C tier is the fact that it is a pretty good recovery tool, not the world's best, but it's pretty long ranged and gives you the option to cancel off the ledge and things along those lines, gives you a fairly versatile range of recovery angles to approach from. It is a tether recovery, they're all exploitable to some degree, but this is definitely one of the better ones. As a command grab though, it's pretty bad. Very slow to start up, only reels in if you're on the ground, which actually is a very nice benefit, it allows you to chase aerial opponents with little risk to yourself, which is good. But even then, the reward is a bit of a combo, but nothing too spectacular. Not going through shields is just so huge, and the aerial version is super weak. Has no utility as a note of shield option. Yeah, I think we're gonna put Joker in F tier as an actual command grab. It might be the worst one in the game. So. I think F tier is appropriate. Byless sort of the creator, obviously reminiscent of the grappling hook, but this one has a lot more utility, so I think it gets bumped up to C tier. Good combo potential at earlier percents, and then later on it can lead to some spiking kills off the side, and it doesn't put you into free fall, so it's not the riskiest thing in the world to go for. Also grabs opponents whether Byleth is on the ground or in the air, and it's actually one of their faster out of shield options too. Really poor horizontal range, and obviously it's got great vertical range, but generally speaking, your opponent is going to be in front of you a lot more than they're going to be above you, and Byleth also has trouble closing gaps and doesn't really want to close gaps that often. Also, it's another hit grab, doesn't go through shields, which means you can't really use it for something like platform pressure. So overall, 
better than Joker's, has some really cool things, and in the grand scheme of moves, it is actually one of the more interestingly designed ones, I think, and it's got some really cool use cases, but again, it's just being stacked up against some of the best in the business, so I can't realistically put it a lot higher than this. I was kind of thinking B tier was a possibility when I started this list, but the more I thought about it, Nah, I think there's just competing against too many other great moves to have that. Yoshi, uh, I think Aglay is going to go A tier. So the move itself is kind of underwhelming. The egg that you spit out is not the best follow-up option in the world. It's a, it's an option. Don't get me wrong. You can get some stuff out of it, but it's not like an incredible payoff. That said, even if the startup time's not great, it's still one of the least committal overall command grabs in the game to go for, and what really bumps it up here is Yoshi's airspeed. His burst range for jumping at his opponent is so good, which means having any kind of aerial command grab mixed up if your opponent's trying to shield against you is such a powerful tool, and also because his airspeed is so high, it makes it great for B reversing, especially because, once again, it's relatively non-committal to go for. Another one of these ones that might be a little weird to see here, it's very tame compared to a lot of command grabs, but Yoshi just gets so much solid use out of it. It's a very dependable, reliable move for him. Isabel, the last of the hit grabs. B tier for this one. I don't want to put it any lower than this. I think you could make a case for having it in A, but again, just as a hit grab, not being able to go through shield is such a big deal compared to the moves it's competing with. It's really active, can be super disruptive, can be very useful off stage without having to commit yourself too much, so it's got a lot of good things going for it, and the fact that it's multi-directional and it can kill, those are really solid. It's not the greatest tether recovery on earth, and Isabel also isn't necessarily the first character in line who needs something like this, but still a cool bonus. Again, it's just the hit grab thing. That's such a handicap against the rest of the roster here. I guess it's also a bit committal to go for. It's not the easiest move in the world to get around, but you can get around it, and Isabel spends so long reeling it in afterwards that if she whiffs, she's in big trouble. Ridley's Space Pirate Rush, I think this one gets a C tier. I think you could also make a strong case for it being in B tier, but personally I'm going to put it in C. It's super slow to start up at 22 frames, and while the aerial version is a little bit safer, the grounded version is also incredibly committal to go for, has a ton of ending lag if you whiff, so that combination of slow to start up and risky, that's bad. The payoff for landing, it's also a little bit of a mixed bag, so if you land at a later percent, it's great, it rakes your opponent to the side of the stage and then kills them relatively reliably. If you hit it earlier though, there's essentially no payoff since you're your opponent can mash out of it, and if they're a really good masher, they can do this for a long time. It's got some other good stuff going for it too, its burst range is excellent, and this also means that since it doesn't send you into free fall, it's a pretty solid recovery option, and you can get some cheesy setups with the aerial version, but I'd argue they're less consistent than the usual kamikaze options, which themselves aren't incredibly consistent a lot of the time. So that's kind of how Space Pirate Rush gets summed up. It's a very cool move, has a lot of interesting use cases, but in terms of consistency, it's just not quite there. One of the harder command grabs to land, and sometimes when you land it, the payoff is really strong, but sometimes it's not. Need to just keep saying this, not a bad move by any means, but just not as good as some of the others on here. Wario, on the other hand, I think I'm going to put an A, and this one is kind of the polar opposite of Ridley's in a lot of ways. Very low range, not flashy at all, but is also just incredibly simple and dependable and useful. The frame data for this one is really good, and it's controllable because you can hold how long the move stays out for. And Wario is another character with insane air mobility which means if you're using this for B-reversing or trying to pressure an entire platform after a tech situation, because of how long the move stays out for, you can actually do that. And then on top of all of that, it kills off the side. So for example, in a ledge trapping situation, you can jump into the air and hold chomp out, and then it covers neutral getup or ledge jump or ledge attack and kills them from that. So that's all really powerful. It's got a couple other quirks to it that I guess are kind of cool. The ability to heal yourself for a few percent every time you bite down on someone, like neat, I I guess. Same with the ability to eat projectiles, even if it's a bit too risky to be going for a lot. Make no mistake though, the reason this is in A tier is because it's again just an incredibly solid, dependable move. Kept out of S tier just because its range is really short, and it also doesn't have incredible kill power or damage output, but in terms of just a command grab that's no frills, no nonsense, kind of in the same vein as Bowser's just maybe a hair downgraded, yeah, Wario gets the job done. Robin, I think I'll give a C tier too. So, 
Nosferatu has some of the highest damage output in terms of differential it does. Its damage output is good, but then obviously it also heals some of that damage to you, so you're creating a very big gap in terms of the percentage between you and your opponent every time it lands. It's also not a horribly slow or committal option to go for, which is really good. On the other hand, it also never kills and gives you what's probably the worst positional advantage out of any of the command grabs, but another really obvious major flaw is the resource dependence. You lose the tome and have to wait for it to recharge, and thankfully it's not the 40 second recharge time that Smash 4 had, that's absolutely obscene, but it's still a major reliability issue. There are times that you're going to want to, for example, go for a platform pressure situation where you just can't because you like using Nosferatu, and shame on you for trying to land your command grab. It does spawn a book for you, which is nice, and you sometimes see Robin Mains burning through Nosferatu on purpose in downtime so that they can actually get their hands on that book, but Realistically, the book is one of the worst items. That's not to say it's bad, items are pretty much always really good, but if you compare it to something like Banana or Peach's Turnip or Link's Bomb, it's just not quite in the same vein, especially since Robin is already a projectile-based character. Ending with the minecart, um, this is a little bit of a weird one. I'm not totally sure whether to put it in S or A tier. If this is online we're talking about, it's S tier easily, but offline where things are a lot more reactable, um, hold off on its placement for the moment. So let's get this out of the way immediately. It's a bit of a weird one to be evaluating alongside these other moves because it's not really a command grab in the traditional sense, but I mean, it does go right through shields if Steve's not in the cart, so I guess it does kind of count. Really good mix-ups on this one, both in terms of mobility and in terms of applying pressure. You can land combos off it whether Steve is in or out of the cart. It's pretty easy to beat out though, and it can be reacted to fairly reliably offline. So it's frame 18 startup, which isn't that slow, but it's also not that fast. And unless you're running the powered uh, rail version of it, it's also got fairly low velocity. If you try to do that shield pressure mix up where Steve approaches them in the car, it touches their shield, then immediately hops out. That one it can actually just be countered by rolling inward. Steve can never get any follow up of any kind from it. Minecart is arguably the main reason you want iron as Steve and it's not that difficult to get iron. All things considered, I feel like I have to put it in S tier, it's just so crucial to Steve's gameplay, uh, but again, a lot of that comes from watching online gameplay since he was released in the online era. Offline this move is not as threatening, but I think in the grand scheme of things, this move just does way too much. It, again, bit weird to be on this list, I admit that it's kind of comparing apples to oranges a little bit, but I'm being inclusive, this does have very clear command grab-ish properties, and I think in those terms, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty damn strong. All right, that should do it for this one. Thanks for watching, everyone, and let me know what you thought of this list. Please consider leaving a like on this video and maybe a comment if you enjoyed it. It helps spread it in YouTube's algorithm. And you can also follow me on Twitter at Mr. Mockrock, Twitch at Mockrock Twitch, that's one word. And I also have a Patreon under Mockrock. This isn't going to be Mockrock's tier list channel, but like I said, I would like a decent amount of videos that have at least loose tie-ins to Mockrock content. This one is admittedly a little bit looser than last time, but I still sort of thought it would be a good idea anyways, so seeing the appropriate time as any to make it. And I'd also like to do this for some of my back catalog content, so if you have an idea for an older video of mine that you might think could have a cool tie-in video, let me know, it might get made at some point. If you're a patron, YouTube member, or Twitch subscriber, you get stuff like Discord access, early access to videos like this, content polls, and I might actually put some Mock Rock Talk stuff up on those polls too, so if that sounds interesting, go for it. But in any case, appreciate you watching, that'll be it for now. Later, people! The one that's kind of used as a symbol for all reflectors in the series now, Fox's Shine, which is actually called Fox's Reflector. So obviously really infamous move. In Today I thought we'd take a bit of a less worn approach and instead sing the praises of some of the series' better moves that don't receive the same level of attention among the competitive scene, whether that's because they're new additions.